Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. May the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Happy, happy Friday, everybody. You are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. I am Scott, your host, and a man who is celebrating five years in business with my little company as of yesterday. Woohoo! And with me in this studio is the studio engineer's studio engineer, making it work from Intertalk Central, Paul B. How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Congratulations. I was not aware. Five years. Five years, baby. That's what I'm talking about. And they all said it would be a big failure. Well, screw you. It's awesome. <laughs> when I said I was going to be a comedian, they laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. No one's laughing now. I have literally dozens of people listening to my radio show, so kiss my butt. <laughs> well, congratulations. Well, thanks very much. It's fun. I, I enjoy it. I don't take it too seriously. It's, good. it's a good time for everybody. If you out in radio land have a question for me, uh, you can always email me at scott at robertsoncom.com. I will definitely try to answer anything right on the show, try to um, you know weave it into what we're doing topic-wise on the show. And you can also find all of my you know uh, client posts, stories that we're placing, stories that find I find interesting, things like that, tidbits at my Robertsoncom Facebook page. Uh, you can like that or just visit that. Uh, it's just facebook.com slash robertsoncom, two M's, or Twitter at robertsoncom. Also, not surprisingly, with two M's. Reach out and uh, connect with me online. Um, hopefully, I can keep you entertained and give you some good tips, too. Um, today's episode, which is actually episode 44. I was jumping the gun. I thought it was 45, but it's actually 44. Um, episode 44, I, I call marketing mind games, you know, and... Um, I, uh, I've just been inspired to talk about this, uh, recently in its own program. You know, we human beings love to tell ourselves little stories, you know, from the time we are very small, we just learn about our world through stories. You know, we entertain ourselves with them. We literally create reality for ourselves using them, but are they really true in this episode? I really want to closely examine the narratives and some of the mind games specifically behind marketing approaches that we can, um, you know, we can learn from and we, we can learn to, you know, if we know how the human mind works better, we're going to be better at our job because that's ultimately what we're trying to do here in the, uh, you know, in the marketing communications profession. So, and, um, even though I'm a fan of saying, um, you know, it's marketing, not mind control, um, it is really important to understand that that is the goal of everything that we try to do from a marketing perspective. Uh, I run into marketers all the time, and um, sometimes it it really kind of surprises me and confuses me as to how they don't know they don't spend more time on this stuff because um, you know the rest of the stuff is just tactics. Everybody's really excited about talking about tactics. You know, how many ads are we putting out? How many, you know, what are we doing for a PR, you know, outreach? What are we doing for that? That's like a general getting excited and talking about how many bullets are in the gun and how many guns we're handing out. Generals don't give a flying crap how many guns are out there, right? What, what do generals focus on? Strategy. We're going to go in here first. We're going to send this division here. We're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, bomb the hell out of this place with, you know, with, with the planes here. We're going to fire here. Strategy, 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 because they know what they're trying to do. They're back up. They look at the map and say, we're trying to take over this piece of, you know, this piece of land. The, you know, our plan is we're going to take over, you know, this section right here on the map. Right. And here's how we're going to do it. That kind of thing. And. If and if mark if generals ran wars like marketers you know uh, run marketing campaigns, then again I swear they'd be counting how many bullets are in a crate and and figuring out how many bullets each gun's going to get, right? Think bigger, think bigger, back up, look at the map, figure out what it is that you are trying to do at a much larger level. Um, and what we're trying to do at that larger level is we're trying to get inside somebody's head. You know, I mean, not to be too creepy about the whole thing. That is sort of the plan. So, you know, 
uh, I, you know, I was talking with the guys before the show started um, about uh, the show on FX right now called Legion. Um, what's fascinating, but it's a show kind of about the um, the X Men, um, uh, you know, the X Men universe, and it's created by Marvel and that and that sort of thing. But what's really interesting about the show to me is that it's told almost entirely inside the mind of one of the main characters, who is a you know who has telepathy and has a lot of things. And um, really, the storytelling has really started to be started to, to piece together his memories. And there's a line in this week's episode that's really, really interesting. And they say, what are we if not the stories we tell ourselves? Really, there, there is just so much truth to that. Uh, you know, all of our behavior, all of, our, um, all of the things we do are based on little stories that we tell ourselves. And when you get really good at marketing, you know how to tell the right stories that get people to move in the direction that you want them to move for your client, your, you know, your stuff. Right. Um, I'm certainly not the first person to propose this. It is a big part of my practice as a marketer is really thinking about the map is thinking about how we move people. Um, if you're in marketing communications and you don't think about this a lot, I would urge you to start you're in the right place. You're talking, you know, you're, you're listening to me talk about it and hopefully I can open your mind up to, uh, what it is that we're actually supposed to be doing in this whole profession thing. So I want to direct you to, um, you know, uh, a really good article, um, that was, uh, was written earlier this year, uh, by Emily Smith called the two kinds of stories we tell about ourselves. And it's based on, uh, it's at ideas, uh, dot com. So it's based on Ted talks. Um, you know, I don't have time to really get into the in, the entire thing here, but what's what's fascinating about this is that she she really outlines the 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 two types of stories that we tell ourselves. I like this quote right here: "People who believe their lives are meaningful tend to tell stories defined by growth, communion, and agency." Right? Uh, I think that that is really really interesting. But do you notice? Um, do you, do you notice what uh, what kind of came first, right? The belief that the life is meaningful, and then the storytelling sort of goes around that, right? The storytelling also feeds that, also creates that. Another quote that she has is, making smaller story edits to personal narratives can have a huge impact on our lives. Um, I remember um, uh, listening to a, a psychologist talk, and he said, um, do you know why... Uh, folks that are in um, abusive relationships tend to almost always go back to an abusive relationship. And it has to do with the personal narrative that they tell themselves when you are in, when you are in that uh, basically you are telling yourself that that's all you're worth. That's all you deserve. That's all, you know, and that can be really powerful because if your subconscious hears that a lot, then it starts to sort of make your choices guide that way, right? And so a lot of people say, well, I don't subscribe to that gobbledygook. You know, I mean, life is, you know, random or, or controlled by other things. You should do some research uh, is what I would say, say on that. I think, you know, when, when you do some research into the human mind, first of all, the first thing that, that you will be impressed with is the fact that how little we know about how the human mind works. Scientists know how parts of the brain light up. We know how thoughts sort of move from one region of the brain to the, to the next. But we know very, very little about how it actually works. Uh, maybe we're not supposed to, to be quite honest. You know, maybe we're not ready for it yet. Um, they say that most human beings, you know, use between use less than 10 percent of their total mind capacity. And that's always a hard thing for people to grasp because it feels like we're using 100 um, percent, you know. But, of course, we we don't as, based on our understanding of kind of how the human human mind works. So I guess my first disclaimer is, is the first first thing that new stuff is coming out about how the human mind works all the time. So if you claim to be an expert in how it works you might be an expert in how it used how we used to think it works, but we might not know because new stuff comes out all the time. I want to hit a couple of things in particular. You know, uh, when we're talking about storytelling that we do to ourselves, and that is this idea of the truth. Um, it's coming out. It's come out a lot. There's a lot of people that that believe that there is sort of one truth. Um, it's really really important for you, especially as a marketer, to understand that there are many truths. 
to understand that nobody sees the world exactly the same thing. I like to use the Rotten Tomatoes website as a fantastic example of how different people see the same thing differently. Uh, I use it as a teaching mechanism all the time with my clients, especially clients that occasionally will believe that everybody is going to have a positive experience with their product and there isn't going to be any, there won't be any negativity. That is a fantasy world of unicorns and rainbows in which we do not live in. So, uh, you know, you need to plant both feet on the earth and understand that people's eyes don't just see, we project things and then see them. We project things and then we see them, right? If we're looking at the same thing, you know, we might not see it the same way. And there are a million reasons why that might happen. It could do with thoughts that are already in somebody's head. It could do with distractions that are already in their mind. It could, do, it could, do, there are, and believe me, we could list, we could go this entire segment listing reasons why we don't see things the same way and we still wouldn't be done. But one thing that you need to understand is, There is no such thing as the truth. There is a truth that is true to some people, and sometimes large people, lots of people agree to truths and that sort of thing, but there is not one the truth. There is one the truth to you, but don't forget it was influenced by your parents, by their parents. It was influenced by all of your friends, everything that you did in college. Everything that every professor told you, everything a boss told you, everything, every positive and negative reinforcement that's happened to your life has shaped what you believe to be the truth. And you must understand that it is only a truth. Very important because, again, if you're going to try to move people on issues and try to move them in products and things like that, then you need to understand that they quite possibly are starting at a very different place than you. And you might need to um, use that empathy engine that we've talked about a bit and come around. You know, another thing uh, that's tossed around a lot is common sense. Well, it's just common sense. Common to who? You know, uh, I don't believe in common sense. I I don't. Um, I, I, I don't think that there is any such thing as that. People are taught different things. Different cultures are taught different things. Um, things that make sense to us are they make sense to us within the framework of the reality that we've sort of constructed for ourselves or has been constructed for us. Right. It's very dangerous to start thinking that um, everyone thinks and sees and and, you know, moves the same way. Um, uh, President Trump just first addressed to Congress this week. Um, if you already like President Trump, chances are you thought it was a pretty good speech. You thought it was pretty strong. You were happy, you know, whatever. Uh, if somebody was already thought that Trump is the next Adolf Hitler, then that's what you saw. That's what you saw. Uh, same speech. How could different people see it differently? Well, again, um, you know, I would refer you to, uh, you know, the the portal of wisdom known as RottenTomatoes.com, where people rate the same movie they saw, and every movie that you can find, you'll find at least, um, you know, you'll, you'll find at least a, a percentage that thought it was great, and some people thought it was the worst, worst, you know, thing ever created in the history of cinema. We're different. Our eyes don't see, they project. As a marketer, you must know this. You must know this and you must know how the, the, the tribe that you're trying to communicate to sees things. It's extremely important. That's why that research stuff that we always harp on, that stuff is wildly important in this because you've got to get in their head if you want a shot at moving them. You've got to get inside their head. You've got to see it through their eyes. You have, that is absolutely imperative that you do it that way. Another thing I wanted to discuss, we talked about, so there's no truth. There's no one truth. There's no one common sense. What about trust? Trust is something that we're always after in marketing. I talk about it. I, you know, I, I talk about it a lot on the show. You know, trust, trust, trust. Where does it come from? At what point does the scale get so overweighed that now you say, okay, now I trust you. Now I trust you. Here is your million dollar answer. It is different for everyone. Trust is different for everyone. Uh, you can apply that in personal relationships. You ever met somebody that um, you know has been cheated on by you know one, two, three, or four people in their lives? Um, how sensitive are they to uh, to trust and to possibly being cheated on again? Hypersensitive would be would 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 jump to mind on that. Absolutely, they are right. They don't trust as easy. 
you know, if somebody has been burned a bunch of times, they're they're not going to trust you. It's going to take a lot more for the trust to happen. Um, you know, uh, trust is, um, you know, I mentioned sort of the metaphor of the scale. That is very useful in your mind to think about, you know, there is a tipping point in every person where they suddenly decide to trust. And I love people that say, uh, well, trust is earned. You know, trust got to be earned. Trust got to be earned. That is BS. Okay. Trust is a choice. There is no such thing as a, a trust ratio in which once you have passed it, it is now you have now officially earned trust. That is smoke. That is BS. That is people not understanding what trust, where, where it really comes from. Trust comes from a choice of when you are willing to trust, you know, and some people say, well, to, you know, so what they're actually saying when they say trust is earned, trust is earned, what they're really saying is my trust is earned. And I have something in mind when I'm saying that when you have, you know, this when this many editors, agree, you know, say that your product is great. And when my Uncle Frank thinks it's great and when and all these things kind of stack up, then I'll think it's great. You know, that's the only time that I'm going to think it's great. Right. Also, just as one more kicker to make this a little tougher. When when I just, you know, when I just said that a lot of trust and things like that happen behind a wall that human beings can't access. We can't come into grips with what our little equation is and when we're going to pass trust. We just know. You ever hear somebody say that? Well, I just know. You're not in touch with it. You, you Sometimes, unless, unless you really you know, are consciously trying to think about it, you might not ever be able to be in touch with it. And there's a lot of things in our brains that work that way, by the way, folks. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the subconscious curtain that we are only partially aware of and may not aware of at all. You know, um, it's, it's interesting, interesting stuff. We are storytellers. We tell stories, uh, you know, to ourselves about what we want ourselves to be. And we align ourselves with the brands that make those stories true about us. That's the part that you need to understand. That's why when we're talking about branding, that's why we talk about that emotion piece, right? Because we want to lock into those I am stories with people. Apple, you are more powerful than you think. It only works if you are a person that wants that story to be true about yourself. We're talking about marketing mind games today on May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. Come on back. We're going to talk about who's winning and losing in the wonderful mind games of marketing. See you in a few. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday. (laughs) 
may the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Righty, righty, righty. This is Mr. Florentino Buenaventura, the CEO of Entertalk Radio, and we're taking a brief, brief, not brief, but brief pause for uh, Mr. Scott. He had a, a, a moment lapse in his internet, as sometimes these things do happen. So appreciate you guys tuning in to May the Best Brand Win and all the great information and uh, uh, knowledge that Mr. Scott Robertson partner. Uh, partakes to us who he shares with us and of course uh you know i want to he's probably not able to listen right now because he's reconnecting in but uh i uh, wanted to give a big shout out to his five-year anniversary as uh one of the if not the best marketing gurus in this this industry and i believe he's back is he back mr paul not yet so it looks like he has uh had a little bit of technical difficulty on his end we do remote a lot of our, our show hosting folks. So, um, you know, that is a, 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 a big way we're able to bring you some of the, the most knowledgeable people without always having to be in the same geographical area. And, but sometimes leaves us at the mercy of Internet service providers, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So, you so know. winning and losing today. Uh, <laughs> losing today is whoever Scott's <laughs> Internet, provider. Internet provider is. <laughs> He can tell us when he comes back on the line. Yeah, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll find out more. Actually, though, I was uh, we were talking in the break, folks. I, sometimes we get these great conversations, but in the break, we were talking about uh, uh, comic book characters and and comic books in general. Paul, were you a big comic book guy? Uh, somewhat. Yeah, yeah. When I was about twelve, thirteen, mostly mostly Spider Man, Wolverine, X Men, Spider Man. But I don't. He's just he's sarcastic. I, I like sarcastic characters. Yeah, you definitely got the smart ass thing going on. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Spider Man. I was, I was the one that I think everyone's going to rag on me about this. But I, my favorite character was Thor. Thor, huh? I, I, I like the movies. I, I don't know why people, you know, dump on them so much. I actually like the Thor movies, but I don't think I've ever had a Thor comic book, so I don't know how those. No, were. I, was, I always had a thing for for mythology and the fact they brought it into. Yeah. Comics was pretty cool. So I guess kind of the weird thing with that is you're not it's it's not really a modern superhero. It's just an ancient ancient myth. It's, you know, it's a god. Yeah, but. we know it's kind of interesting though. I like the way the movies broke it down, where uh, it was uh, uh, technology beyond our comprehension. So anytime we have that, we always call that magic. That's what the you know Thor and Loki. They're just a technologically yeah. advanced. So and that's kind of kind of brings us back to marketing where, you know, sometimes it just seems like magic how people are able to get their brands recognized. But there really is a rhyme and reason behind it all. There's a science behind it all, which Mr. Scott Robertson shares with us, which we're all discovering here as we, we, we kind of move along. Um, Paul, you've kind of been venturing into the, the areas of, of marketing for us here lately. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been pulled into a kicking and screaming, really. <laughs> that's, that's not what I uh, really you know grew up with or pursued as far as education or learning. But I'm get, getting, getting the hang of it, getting uh, – I kind of get – you know, getting excited about it and trying different things. I'm actually – you know, I, I was very slow to get into uh, social media uh, – Facebook and all of that, uh, and I guess marketing really kind of gives uh, gives me an excuse to interact more because then at least it's there's some kind of uh, uh, some kind of a goal to it. Like I'm not just on there, you know, just trying to kill time or you know show off the most you know exciting highlights from my life necessarily. Yeah, you've been focusing a lot on our on our app, and I would encourage everybody to go out and pick that up you know because it's a uh, i really it really gets you tied into the whole inner talk community we're able to you know let you know and notify you of all the cool things that are happening in which paul's been really been been pretty good about yeah yeah uh the cool thing about our app is if uh you're a fan of our shows you could get them all in one place you could obviously get them on itunes or google play spreaker whatever uh 
vehicle you use to listen to podcasts, but uh, if you download our app, you get all our uh, awesome shows in one place, and you get uh, notifications when we post new episodes or if we have an upcoming uh, live interview or event coming up. Uh, so check it out. Go to your iTunes store or Google Play store, download the app, and listen to Scott and all our other hosts. And I just got a text from Scott. He did say that his internet is down and he's uh, he's fixing it. Uh, we're, oh, there he is. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Again, magic. Magic happens. <laughs> all right, Scott, you back with us? Marketing mind games. My uh, my internet just died. I, th- I think uh, I think the, uh, the 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 conspiracy powers that be that was are trying fault. to stop you from talking about all the important things that people should know. Yeah, you were going to bring up a, a very uh, controversial subject in the next segment, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. A, a, a certain cyclotron in uh, in Switzerland beamed some gravitons at you to stop you. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't like it. They they didn't like. It. They're like they, we need letting it all out. What's going on? <laughs> No, I think uh, I've been having a few problems with the uh, the the router here in the office. So, anyway, uh, so where are we? How are we doing? We're we got good. about We're, ten minutes. Uh, yeah, we got about yeah about eleven minutes. We all right, cool. Winning and let's losing. Let's dig. Let, let's dig into who's winning and losing. And sorry about that delay, folks. Uh, the the internet must work for this whole project to work. So, anyway, you know, f- uh, in the winning category or. Maybe the losing category. Facebook is now testing some ad breaks in all of its videos. And they're giving, well, so that's, the, the losing is you've got ad breaks in Facebook videos, right? Awful. But the winning part is the fact that they're giving creators a 55% cut if you have a certain amount of, uh, so basically Facebook today announced that it's uh, testing ad breaks that interrupt on-demand video using a small set of partners who will own 50 who will earn 55% of ad revenue share while Facebook keeps 45%. So that could really change the way creators make video content so they tease viewers enough to sit through the ads and they could lure more producers to Facebook. Uh, that's both kind of winning and losing and just you should just be aware that it's happening sort of thing. Um you know, I want to make sure we have a chance to talk about Uber. Um losing uh, a lot lately, losing a lot of you know fans and visitors and everything. Uber's on a tear lately um, uh, with a lot a lot of bad things coming out about Uber. There's so many that uh, there, there's like there's like at least three or four main areas where we could get into um, where they're in crisis. Uh, but let's start with you, you know l- let's start with the CEO um, uh, Uber, Uber CEO's uh, Travis uh, Kalanick's net worth is somewhere around the neighborhood of $6.3 billion. And he uses Uber, you know, sometimes to go places in the, uh, you know, Silicon Valley region. A viral video um, came out basically about one of his drivers was kind of upset about some of the business model changes that he made to Uber Black. And um, he has got a, a dash cam video that's shooting back into the uh, the back seat there so you can see Travis. And uh, I mean, it just doesn't make you look good as a CEO to be yelling at one of your employees like that and to have one of your employees also yelling at you like that. And the whole, the whole thing is just, it was, was, was all kinds of bad news. So if you haven't seen it, you should, you should see it. It's interesting. Um, it's been all over the news and, and those sort of things. Um, what advice that I give to, to CEOs is, you know, um, you know, don't don't do it right don't do it in the in the car certainly you know to take have that conversation somewhere else uh you know with that person not with the dash cam video you know pointing back at you that kind of thing and then you know obviously this is one of your this is this is not just a driver that's yelling at you this is one of your employees you know you want to be a good CEO. You want to make sure that you, you know, are, are taking care of your employees and listening and, and doing all those kind of things. And, and he, um, uh, you know, doesn't do any of those things and, and, uh, kind of doesn't, doesn't look very good. A lot of the, um, media called him a lot of nasty names, uh, as well, uh, through that. Uh, there's also the whole situation at Uber that, deals with the fact that they're, you know, it, how women are treated at the company. A lot of the stuff's coming out around that. Uh, I mean, there, you know, there's a lot of crisis PR happening around Uber right now, folks. And a lot of it is probably, um, 
just because the company is behaving badly. The really weird one that came out today was the fact that the New York Times is now reporting that the company has, has used some sort of secret internal software as well as good old-fashioned cyber stalking to identify law enforcement officials who are investigating Uber's business practices. So they um, call the program Grayball, um, you know, but basically uh, there's a special tool that where they kind of keep track of law en- enforcement and uh, kind of spy on the cops, which is, you know, illegal and awful. And what what are you doing is 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 absolutely what you need to be saying around this point. And, um, you know, like Gizmodo had uh, the lead into the story basically said now would be today would be a great day to stop using Uber. Uh, you know, Uber's principal competition, Lyft, um, is obviously going to benefit huge from this, right? The fact that even if you're the, the loyalist, you know, you're the most loyal in the world Uber fan, you can't be happy about all this bad news that is befalling the brand right now. And obviously this thing of tracking the police is um, is not is not going to go over very well um, with the police, uh, you know, or with, with anyone, and, and nor should it it's that's you you should not be you should not be doing that so anyway lots of bad news for uber and folks always ask me you know when i'm reporting news like that they say you know what would you do rule number one in crisis communications is find out the truth you know find out the truth what what about this stuff is true what you know what about the stuff is you know is true is there anything that you know you're, you're on a you're on a detective mission to find out the truth and then to be the one that's hopefully going to be you know reporting it and helping people to report it accurately um that is your, you know 100% of your job if you're in a room sitting there going well how can we spin this you're part of the problem you're you're a big part of the problem and um and you shouldn't be doing that uh, that because when we talk about the trust, you know, remember that in the last, the last uh, segment about the trust, there's nothing that knocks the bricks out of the wall faster in trust than lying, getting caught lying <laughs> and continuing to be, uh, you know, not worthy of trust is a good way to say it. So, you know, uh, lots of problems befalling Uber and, um, definitely, I mean, there's no way they could be in anything but the losing category this week. Winning are emojis. Emojis boost push notification up open rates by up to 85%, according to an, um, a, a new study that's out. Mobile marketers can boost the open rates of their push notifications by 85% using emojis. Standard push motif- notifications are only open about 2.44% of the time according to the study, which was uh, done by Lean Plum and App Annie. Uh, push notifications that contain an emoji are open at a much higher rate. Now, what's interesting is why. Why? Um, the According to the report, and you should read the whole report, by the way. Uh, it's fascinating. You could get it uh, from uh, you know from a lot of places. Digital Marketer did a thing. Venture Beat did a whole uh, big piece on it. That's, so you could find it that way. But according to the report... People's brains react to emojis the same way they react to people's faces. They're nonverbal and therefore processed as an emotional signal, not a logical one. That attracts a different part of our brains and therefore has a chance to make an impact beyond the pure logic of a message. Man, is that important to know, right? What they just said was, and, and what they what they believe is, is that emojis connect at a different a different place than words do right weird but not completely you know and not completely out of the realm of possibilities remember in the first segment we were talking about um we're talking about marketing mind games this whole segment we're talking about how we don't understand the brain you got to put emojis in that category an 85 percent um you know open rate on things that use emojis emojis are stupid you know emojis are like little you know they're like little cartoons and 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 you know in an, in an adult world you know a little happy face oh i'm just kidding that kind of thing and they open and they change your open rate by 85 percent. do you still think you're dealing with adults do you still think you're dealing with logical people because this study proves that you are dealing with kids big kids that wear bigger sizes of clothing and sort of masquerade as adults and are driven entirely by emotion. 
listen up marketers. There's more to this stuff than, uh, you know, than we think sometimes. All right. So we got a couple minutes left in this segment. So, uh, I want to talk about Amazon knocking down the internet this week. My internet went down at the beginning of this segment. That was not Amazon's fault. But earlier this week, Amazon, um, <laughs> their explanation is fantastic of this. Um, so Amazon took out like a third of the internet with its cloud, its cloud services, like all these cloud services that you subscribe to. My accounting software uh, is cloud-based. It was down. There's a thing I use for my church to like jump on and participate in the praise band. That was down. There was all kinds of things that were down all over the place. You probably noticed it too. So here's why it happened. And I, and I love this. As Amazon explains it, some of its S3 servers were operating rather sluggishly so a technician tried to fix it by taking a few of the billing servers offline basically a straight fix from the company's playbook it says unfortunately one of the inputs to the command was entered incorrectly and a larger set of servers was removed than intended (laughs) so this is a typo this is this internet outage that affect millions of people and took all kinds of businesses down was a technician somewhere going, going, well, I was told, I was told that I should take the billing servers offline. I was told that if I typed in 10, it would only take down 10 servers. Oh, but you typed in like 10 million. (laughs) 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 Oh, that's, I mean, you, you got to find that stuff funny. You just do. It's, uh, anyway, that's what happened to the internet this week. And we're going to put, we're going to put Amazon in the losing category and hopefully, they will um, learn how to uh, take a few servers down without taking down the entire, you know, totality of the internet. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is beer yoga. Yes, I said it correctly. That is a thing. Nothing is as good as put as really drinking an icy cold beer. But if you could do it while achieving a higher state of being and transcendence of the self through yoga, let's say you could do both those at the same time. Beer yoga is a real thing. It's been, after being enjoyed by Berlin hipsters, it's now found its way to Australia, where it's, where people are doing beer yoga, boga, beer yoga, a marriage of two great loves, beer and yoga. I'm going to put it in winning. I'm going to, you know, I mean, I got to say that that's probably winning. I, you know, we could talk more about it, but beer yoga, it's a thing and it's winning. And you are winning because you're listening to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, the undisputed leader on Music Biz Talk. Come on back. We're going to give you some tips to be great at these marketing mind games. See you in a few. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on?
may the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Happy Friday, everybody. You are back with May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. I am Scott. Back, we're talking about marketing mind games. With me in the studio is Paul. And Paul and I were talking a little bit before the show started. He mentioned something called the Mandela Effect. Uh, tell the good people what the Mandela Effect is there, Paul. Uh, the Mandela Effect, I've been kind of coming across it a lot on the on the Internet, uh, is this weird thing that people have where they remember certain things differently than uh, they are. Uh, a lot of it has to do with like brand names or... Uh, lines for movies stuff that people mm-hmm. like you know knew all, all their life uh and now it's the facts are different and some people remember it one way others remember it uh a different way and a lot of it can just be explained to you know people just misremember things and now we have the internet and you can fact check them and they just don't know any of it but some of them are weird so like the reason that's called the mandela effect uh is that Apparently, a wide cross section of people clearly remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the eighties, uh, hmm. and not Interesting. not be, you know li- living on to become the president of South Africa. Uh, and huh. uh, one of the, the recent one that I came across that really weirded me out because I swear I you know I remember this is the Smithsonian I remember it it's always being called the Smithsonian Institute and apparently now it's the Smithsonian Institution and that's how Scott remembers it I believe that's uh, right uh, Smithsonian Institution I've never heard that it's always been Institute for me so so the conspiracy theory is that something uh, is going on where we're somehow either uh, glitches in the matrix or we're being shifted into a parallel reality and having like memories ah. of a previous reality that we're uh, shifted from uh, maybe having some something to do with whatever they're doing at CERN sh- shooting gravitons into the past or whatever the hell uh, so very <laughs> <laughs> very creepy stuff and, and I think a very good illustration of what Scott t- is talking about is people's reality is you know uh-huh. Aside from just opinions, even at the fundamental level, could be completely different. All right, here's what I think. I think the the flash went to uh you know went forward or went backward in time, and he accidentally messed up. And um you know it used to be called Smithsonian Institute in the reality that you remember, and then he did something that made made it the Smithsonian Institution, and then that's what it is here in the the regular reality. And your memories just haven't caught up to what the Flash has done. Either that, or we are living in the uh, some sort of a matrix type uh, simulation. And you know, like, like you said, it could be one typo in the code that sends the whole thing into a tailspin, <laughs> like an Amazon. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. We, we, I, we all knew that Amazon crashed it or whatever. But when the explanation came out, I, I swear I was laughing for for so long, just imagining that like there's just some guy out there who's who's just trying to do like a little job somewhere and he just he just creates this huge catastrophe that takes you know a, literally like a third of the internet was down for hours for hours because in, in the in the United States or worldwide uh, I believe worldwide wow. no, I believe worldwide yeah. that that is scary <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a good one that's a good one well uh the mandela effect well that's really fascinating too i i you know i could see it you know i mean like i said we are talking this entire episode about how um there is not there is not one truth you know there are many and the fact that you know we love to tell ourselves kind of little stories and and as you get older you don't remember as well uh it happens to all of us probably just more and more data being plugged in and you know we you know we just remember things differently than maybe when they actually happen i mean i you know that would be the best most scientific explanation i can give well we are talking about marketing mind games and in this segment I wanted to make sure that I was uh, leaving you guys with some uh, some good tips to be great at them. As I mentioned, uh, first and foremost, if you're in marketing, you are doing this. This this is your job. This is absolutely your job. And I've had people challenge me on that before and say, 
um, well, you know, uh, that, you know, that's all kind of highfalutin and, 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 and that kind of stuff, but we really need to get this stuff out there. And then you just start, you know, you just use the why word a few times on, on discussion like that. You're like, why are we doing that? Well, then, you know, because we want people to buy this. Why do we want that? You know, and, well, what, you know, you, you know, you just keep, just keep using why. And, and eventually you will get to your, your kind of core reason as to why you're doing stuff. And that is ultimately that, you know, you want to uh, build a favor, favorable relationship, a favorable, you know, brand relationship with uh, whatever audience it is that you're trying to impact out there. And the way to do that better than anything is to uh, know something about it before you're uh, before you're going in. So tip number one. Um, and I call this one "Put down your prism and and try to see your world uh, through theirs now um you know a prism is uh, remember prism from science class maybe maybe you had it maybe you remember it differently maybe it was called something else in your alternate reality but uh, a prism is basically um, a piece of glass or a piece of you know crystal that reflects light um, depending on how you hold it, you can see different colors in it. Right. Uh, if you have one nearby and you've or, and you've recently smoked some weed. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, if you have one nearby, um, try it. Uh, you know, you've run light through it. Uh, if you can run a single beam of light through it, you can see the prism split the light into uh, the things that the colors that make up white light, um, which is, you know, obviously fascinating if you're in science and also in eighth grade. But how it, um, you know, relates to marketing is the fact that. We all are, think of, of your eyes like a prism, right? Um, if you're looking at it a certain way, uh, you'll see certain colors. If you turn it and you look at it another way, you will see other colors, right? Remember I said our eyes don't see, they project. And then we interpret what they project as sight. But that those two things are not the same thing. And you need to, you need to understand that. Because um, I can't tell you how many marketing means I've set into I've set in, and people say, and, and people will use their own experience as a justification as to why the target audience might take it a certain way. And they, they maybe they aren't like you, you know. Maybe, how, you know, you know. The only way to know them is to know them. You can't use you for them because you're not them. You know, uh, I can't even use me as them because I'm not them. Now, you ever have the assignment before um, and you have to, uh, you know, uh, try to convince a group that's not like you, you know, <laughs> what what they're you know going to be doing? If you're a good marketer, you can do that because you can be a bit of a chameleon. You can turn your prism and you can see the world through theirs. Again, that always comes back to research, because if you don't have a good battery of research as to what they think, what they feel, what they see, how they see it, how they might react to it then you're not going to be able to uh, influence it. And also you don't have one other key piece of information is where do they stand right now? You know, I mean, let's talk about the border wall, the big, you know, the big border wall of Donald Trump. You know, you're going to have a hell of a lot easier time convincing people that are, uh, let's say you, your communications assignment is you're going to try to, you know, get everybody on board with building the wall, you know, um, well, shouldn't you sort of know how they feel about the wall uh, before you try to do that? Uh, different people are going to, you know, folks that are already in favor of it, that job's pretty easy, got to say. You know, folks that are vehemently opposed to it, you're going to have much tar much tougher time. And you're going to want to speak differently to that audience because you're going to want to be, you know, respectful of what how what they're thinking and feeling about, uh, you know, the situation. Um, you know, you're going to want to, and, and there are, you know, I mean, you know, do what you can do, do what you, which brings me, this actually brings me to tip number two, attract those you can attract and just understand that it won't be everybody. Just understand that you cannot please everybody, nor should you try to please everybody. Brands that try to be for everyone do a really crappy job for anyone. You know, I mean, don't, don't do that. Um, again, you know, you know, you know why we spend so much time on market segmentation and things like that that is incredibly boring. And I understand that no, it's not the fun stuff, and nobody wants to talk about market segmentation and what the, and, and those kind of things. But if you don't have that foundational stuff done, then you don't know 
how you can attract people to what it is that you're trying to do, right? You don't have a good battery of research about why you want to attract these people and how and what how difficult a job that might be. And if you go out and say, well, we're just going to, you know, fire the shotgun and see how many holes we can make, you know, that kind of thing. That's not efficient and it's not very smart, honestly. Um, so, you know, let's take the border wall example for another, another thing. There are some people that will always be, that will always be against that. You know, they have a narrative in their mind that that is a terrible thing. That's going to be a horrible thing. That's going to, you know, that's, that's just anti everything that they stand for. And they're never going to be in favor of it. You're probably not going to get those people, you know, hate, hate to break it to you. You know, as a marketer, you know, you're not going to convince those people it's a good idea. So stop trying. Where do you want to go? Where's the middle of the bell curve? You know, the, you know, uh, everybody know, you know, the bell curve looks like a bell, that kind of thing. Here's why it's important in marketing, right? The end of the bell curve is the folks that you've already probably got. They're already on your side of things. Um, a lot of people in marketing are like, well, let's try to move people on the very other end of the bell curve and try to move them you know, towards the middle or try to do that. That's a harder job. It's going to take a longer time. What you want to do is you find that fat part of the bell curve that leans already towards what you're doing, and that's where you want to strike. That's that's where that's the piece of land that you want next. Talked about the military applications, right? All business stuff comes from military. Let's look at our bell, bell curve for a second. You know, you've already got this part of let's say it's land. You know, you've already got this part of the bell curve that represents the territory that you have. What part is the most logical part for you to take next? The part that's already leaning your way and is close to and like shares a border with the part that you already have, right? So strategically, strike there. That's what you want. And people say, well, what about these other people? That it's going to take longer, you know, you, you, and plus you can't, you, you can't take that without taking the other piece you know, that's next to it. You ever play risk? You know, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta take the country that's next to the one you're trying to fight. So, um, that's really, really important. Attract the people that you can attract. Tip number three, always work to build trust and strengthen relationships and weigh every business decision that you have using this. Always work for this. This is the most important work that you can do in marketing is to build trust, strengthen relationships. Build trust, strengthen relationships. That's what you're about. Every interaction should be about that. Every interaction should be about that at the end. You know, even if it's a purchase, people say, oh, every action should be about sales, Scott. That's right. But that's just strengthen relationships too. You know, you want to sell to somebody one time or do you want to sell to somebody, you know, every time the printer runs out of ink, you know? Does Gillette become a multi-million dollar company by selling a razor one time? No. What do they do? They sold the razor one time. They'll give you the damn razor. What they want to sell you are the blades. You know, they want you on a long-term carousel ride with the brand. And they don't want any other, you know, carousel rides taking you away. Right? That is marketing. That is what marketing does. Builds trust, strengthens relationships in every business decision. Let's look at our Uber example. Example. Is that company working to build trust and strengthen relationships? That company is working on getting itself and thrown in prison in uh, many different ways. It's working on that, and none of that stuff is right. They need to, they need to get into a conference room yesterday and and get on you know a better a better way of doing stuff because man, that is a mess over there. Um, tip number four: mental movement movement. Up, you know, along the bell curve can still be considered a success, even if the behavior doesn't immediately follow. You know, marketing is about this long game sometimes. It is about movement. Um, and sometimes it can be very gradual. And you need to, uh, if you're a CEO, you need to understand that marketing movement can be very gradual. And if you're a marketing person, you need to give yourself permission and say, okay, well, this is this might be a little bit gradual. You know, when I worked at NAMM, a good por- portion of my job was to convince people that playing musical instrument was a great idea. What I found was um, there's a large percentage of people who already don't identify themselves as a musician, and it takes a hell of a lot of work to move people past that because when they start telling you stories as to why the story involves they were humiliated by a um, music teacher in front of the class it was a traumatic experience for them 
it, you know, I mean, there is a lot of psychological baggage with playing a musical instrument, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, there's a lot of people holding a lot of memories that aren't exactly positive about doing it. And um, if you're going to be, you know, part of the team or part of the job that's going to convince people to play a musical instrument, then you damn sure better know why people don't. And in my experience, it was never a happy memory. It was never a very happy story. And to move those people gradually is a trick. It's a big trick. And it takes a long time to do it. It takes, you know, uh, if if there's a story that's built, you know, down deep in there, it's going to take a lot to, you know, uh, you, you know um, if you've ever been to therapy, you know, that therapy is not a, a, a quick process either. The mind doesn't work that way. It moves gradually. It moves very gradually. And sometimes it doesn't move at all, folks. Just so you know, I mean, remember we talked about a lot of stuff we don't understand. You know, it's like sometimes it's not going to move at all. And you got to just accept that and move on. You know, you can do the best that you can. So, you know, I always consider movement a success. But sometimes you need to understand that it is a bit of a long game. You know, the tip number five, you know, understand that we as, you know, kind of a, a profession, you know, along with the, the psychiatric profession and, and, uh, and science and everything, you know, we only know a fraction about how our brains work. Give yourself permission to keep learning and growing in your knowledge of this topic. This is the topic area that you need to grow the most. It's not how many paper clicks, you know, it's not, it's not any of that nonsense. It is understanding human behavior. We are not trying to influence, you know, the army of, you know, general dynamic cybernetic robots, which are scary as hell, by the way. We are not trying to uh, influence them. We're trying to influence the people, the people. A good thing would, to do would be to influence the people who are building the robots and get them to stop. That would be awesome. You know, knowing a little more about ourselves makes us better marketers it also makes us better people. We are not born with an instruction manual about how our brains work. And let's just face it, you know, we know so little about how they work that it's almost laughable. We know a little bit. But once you start seeing your job as a marketing communications pro, as an influencer of behavior, and not just a person who's following a checklist of tactics, figuring out how many bullets are in what particular gun and that kind of thing, you'll be a better marketer. And more of us being better marketers makes marketing better. It's going to, you know, and, and that gives me hope. And that tells me that marketing might just have a chance in the coming years of doing something uh, really good as opposed to being, you know, a real problem, uh, you know, as it has been. And that's it for me, marketing fans. Until next week, this has been Scott Robertson, host of May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. This has been May the Best Brand Win on intertalkradio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. 
This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on?